We're about to bring you a special Sunday Scrum feature, a conversation with Tanya Talaga, author of this year's CBC Massey Lectures. All Our Relations, Finding the Path Forward, explores one of the biggest ongoing tragedies in this country, youth suicide on First Nations reserves, part of the devastating legacy of what some say amounts to cultural genocide against Indigenous peoples. Tanya will be delivering a series of lectures in five different cities across the country beginning this Tuesday in Thunder Bay, Ontario, but she's agreed to stick around to tell us a bit about what her ultimate message will be. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, I should point out you can get a little bit of a preview of this in the Toronto Star this weekend, part That's of the, right. the right. Atkinson Initiative, uh, long-standing right. tradition of the Toronto Star. Uh, so this, uh, you've had uh, a year essentially to go across this country. What did you learn? That's, um, I wish I could say in five minutes or ten minutes, but thankfully I have five hours across the country to talk about what I've learned. And, you know, the more I learn, it's almost the more I need to know, the more we need to know as a country. Um, what I've learned truly is not just about what's happening in communities in Canada, First Nations and Inuit communities here, but also around the world. There are so many similarities, sadly, as a result of colonization, as a result of racist laws, as a result of putting children in residential schools, not just here in Canada, and you know, we all know that in Canada, or I hope we're all knowing now in Canada, that from the mid-1880s to 1996, there were 150,000 Indigenous kids put into the schools, 139 schools across the country, aimed at assimilation, taking them away from their family, their culture, everything they know. That just didn't happen here. It also happened in Australia. It happened in northern Norway to the Sami people above the Arctic Circle. It happens um, in the United States. It did happen in the United States. And if you look at, too, all of these indigenous nations and what's happened as a result, you can also see, too, high youth suicide rates. And that, sadly, is is something that sort of brings us all together with a commonality that I wish we didn't have. When you say high teens or young people suicide rates, sometimes they're teens, sometimes they're younger, and That's it can right. move rage like a fire through a community, can't it? It's true. You know, sometimes we see that happening. We see that happening in clusters. But, you know, the main reason and what my Massey lectures are trying to get a hold of is why this is all happening in the first place and that's such a big question and it goes back so many many generations it goes back to see the seeds of colonization it goes back to contact it goes back to so many things and I know these are big concepts for everyone to sort of to, to, to grasp but it's it's absolutely true you know we have to go back to a place of belonging as First Nations communities. We have to go back to a place, and it's interesting, our, you know, our Sunday Scrum, just our topic, what we're just talking about, you know, with Section 35 of the Constitution. We're talking about giving Indigenous people the right, you know, to have their say. That is essentially what I'm also talking about here in the Massey Lectures. There needs to be a rise of First Nations communities and an acceptance of all Canadians, government levels. Um, and yes, John Ibbotson, it's going to be messy, but you know everything has to be reworked because there are inequities in this country. There are inequities when it comes to Indigenous kids. Lack of access to health care, lack of access to high schools, lack of access to safe communities, safe houses, you know, places where they're tucked in at night kids and they're told by somebody, by their parent, that they love them. That's how you grow healthy kids. And we have not been doing that in this country. We have not been doing that due to all of these things, due to look at the Indian residential school system, look at colonization. It all plays a part. As you say, the roots of this run deep and go back uh, generations, hundreds of years. Did you get a chance to be able to look at solutions or let's say first steps to move forward and to try and erase and, and recover from those hundreds of years? It goes back to equity, to me. It really does. You know, when I did start this journey of looking at um, suicide rates across the country, I first did it for the Atkinson Fellowship. That's what I had embarked on at first. And I thought, you know, I'll just go back and I'll read all of these studies. I'll go back and I'll look at, I'll, I'll talk to all the people that are out there in the field. I'll try and get a handle on what the best practices are that are out there. And the more I found out, the more I realized there are no magic answers. There are no magic solutions. 
There are some areas that are doing better than others, but at the end of the day, we're talking here actually about rising and raising children's rights. This is about equity in this nation and in other Indigenous nations too. And that is how we grow healthy children, giving every child the chance to succeed. And until we do that, we're not going to stop the kids from dying. When you go on reserve, when you talk to people, what do they tell you? You know, um, it's a sense of loss. Depends on when you're there. I mean, if you're there for a memorial service or if you're there for a funeral, the loss is felt by everybody. Often communities where the suicides are happening too, they're, they're small places, you know, 300 people, 400 people, 500 people. A loss is absolutely immense. You know, I think um, uh, there was uh, on Twitter just recently, just yesterday, somebody mentioned how in an Inuit community, 10 suicides have just happened in one small community. That would result to about 14,000 deaths in Ottawa, for example. The scope is immense. The feelings are, how do we stop this? Well, we know as communities how to stop that, and that is equity. That is having control over healthcare dollars, for example. When you look at a lot of First Nations communities across this country, there's no access to doctors in clinics. There's no access to, to proper nursing care. These are basics of life that everybody else in this country have. Those things need to be, the funding mechanisms need to be put in the hands of First Nations communities so they can decide their own path forward. So people watching this, people listening to you, people hearing the passion in your voice and listening to all of the research that you've done for this, people who are allies, people who, who are with you in spirit, what can they do to start to make these changes? Thanks for that question. That's always a good one. You know, everybody can do something. That's the thing. You know, opening up your, your ears, opening up your mind, opening up your heart to what has been happening in this country for so long. I mean, we're finally starting to talk about it now. We're, start, we're finally starting to embrace, okay, you know what? It's not right that there are no high schools for Indigenous kids in Northern Ontario, so they have to leave their families, their homes, their language, everything they know. Guess what? It's the same for kids that are having issues and need to see a doctor or need to see a mental health professional in their communities as well. They need to go. They need to travel as well. It's the same problem. And if all of us open our eyes and say, you know what, this isn't good enough anymore, let's make those legislative changes that we were talking about earlier that aren't happening, that's how we'll go forward.